Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So today's job is to cut three keyways, half inch keyways, in this inch and 15 16 shaft. Um, and they're all got to be in line. So let's figure out how to do that. And we're going to do it all on the Bridgeport Mill. Now I already have my back jaw indicated. I always indicate that for the digital readout. It's always at zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a half inch two flute end mill. Now I've had very good success with two flute over four flute doing keyways um, because a four flute tends to uh, plug up with chips a little bit easier and then causes um, deflection. Whereas a two flute has a little bit more give. And you want to use a center cutting end mill. Now, I got it in the mill here and one thing you need to do when you're doing this longer stuff is be able to support it. And actually did not need any shim stock, any thin shim stock. This is a parallel, a couple one, two, three blocks and a piece of three quarter inch cold rolled to support it. And that came out perfect. Now the other bridge port and the other mill, I have this old junky vise, but I have this bracket that I built and just kind of stays on the end of the table. And this is machined to the height of the vise. So it works extremely well to support the bar stock when you're doing the longer stuff. And I need to do that for this mill yet. So I'm on center, I'm just going to bring the, the table up to the, to the cutter and then we'll get started. Now this first keyway at the end of the shaft here is nine inches long and Knowing the application, I don't need to be super perfect with this. Um, this customer has specified just getting the keyways close and which cuts down the cost for them. So we're going to finish with uh, the center of our end mill on this line I just drew. So I'm just going to bring my end mill over. I'm already set at half of the inch and 9 sixteenths at 9.68. So I'll bring it over and I just bring it down to touch it and I don't bring it down hard. And then I'll back it off on the knee a little bit and then start it up and bring it back up to touch. And that'll get me my zero height there, right there. I'll back it back off and move it out. So according to the machinery handbook, I need to go 282 thousandths deep. And I'm going to do this in two passes, actually. So I'm going to take 150 on this pass. And a lot of people are going to probably think I'm nuts, but I've been doing this a long time this way and have had very little problems. So here goes. Let's got the power feed set. dial in our feed until it feels good. 90% of machining is by feel. Feel and sound. All right, there was our first pass. Now I'll go ahead and take my uh, second pass to my 282. And there it is. I'll just put a little oil down in the 
groove and away we go. So if you're wondering how accurate this keyway is, this is a half inch, 500 gauge block. And I can't get it to start. And here is a 350 and a 149, so 499 thousandths. And I can just get it to start in there. So that is a 499 keyway. And that will be perfect for this uh, application that'll allow the customer to tap the key in there and it won't fall out. Um, with a half inch end mill that, that came out beautiful. So before I even take this out of the vise and move it down for the next key, I have a key that's a little undersized. I tap in and get it in there nice and snug on the bottom and then I set my machinist level across and find level. Um, so see where the level is and then calibrate my my level to that so that when I move this shaft down I can just set the level back on there and set the the alignment perfectly. So again, I got my lines drawn on here where I start and stop um, the center, and we'll just go ahead and, and uh, start bringing it in. Um, nice and gentle. Um, this is a center cutting end mill, so it'll do just fine. And before anybody comments that I didn't measure my keyway depth, I did. I measured it with the micrometer, and we're at 1.654. And 1.655 is the actual um, recommended depth, so we're okay there. So we'll just bring it down. Till it touches. And there it is. And I'm actually gonna set my uh, DRO now at zero. And we have our zero yet on our knee crank. And we'll go in 150, nice and easy. You don't want to go too fast and overtax the cutter and have problems. And these are just high speed steel cutters um, coated. And I believe I bought them from uh, KBC Tool actually. So. There, and my paintbrush got that off. Now we go ahead and set our feet again.
And there I'm at the end of my cut. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna plunge it in here the rest of the way and then cut back. And we're coming up on the end. And you see on the readout, we're coming up to our zero. And stop it there and I'll hand crank it in the last little bit. To zero. That's good. And I'll crank her down and out. So I already measured this keyway for depth, we're good, and um, the width, we're still at 0.499, so amazing. Now we take it out, and I'll spin it around for the other keyway. Actually, let me mark them off first. 37 to 43 and a half. So 37 to 43 and a half. Put a little tension on my vice jaws just so that it doesn't move on me too much. And get level back up here. Now I had this absolutely perfectly square in the level on the other way, so we should be okay to go the same way. And these levels aren't super precision, but they're close enough for this kind of application. There's, if you wanna do a super precision inline keyway, there are better ways of going about it, but this, for the application this is going in, this is perfect. I'll bring it back over to center, because I had to move it off center just to uh, get the part out. 968. I'll bring the mill over to about center on the line there. Like I said, this, the application, this doesn't require an absolutely perfect keyway. Um, if I wanted it perfect, I'd probably set it up on the f uh, planer mill or maybe on the horizontal boring mill. So now we'll go ahead and touch it off. And there. And our zero is still good. And we'll zero the digital readout and plunge it in 150 again.
are three keyways cut in nearly perfect alignment and they are some beautiful keyways. All done on the Bridgeport mill. So there you have it, my very quick, easy, effective way of cutting keyways in perfect alignment um, or nearly perfect alignment. There are better ways of doing it that are absolutely perfect. This is good enough for the applications that uh, this job is for, so it, it didn't need to be absolutely precision and therefore can save a lot of cost to the customer and a lot of time and setup. So I've got three more of these to do. I'm gonna get them done, get them out to the customer, and until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.